In this image you can see how we are looking at the diffraction pattern of a human hair. On the left hand side we have a red laser light shining through what appears to be a cover slide however it has a single hair mounted through the middle. It is then being projected onto a white piece of paper in which a 10 centimeter wide rectangular box has been drawn and you can see my mobile phone mounted taking an image of the diffraction pattern generated. Due to memory limitations in Tracker, we do not want to process the whole image. We want to just process the area that has data. So I'm going to right mouse click on this and click edit. I will zoom out, highlight the area that I'd like to process and crop it and I will then save this as cropped. If I now exit this is the image that will process. I'm now just going to open Tracker One thing we need to do in order to process images without Tracker crashing is to change the memory size to 500 to 1 gig. I'm just going to load up 1 gig of memory just to be sure. It will ask you to restart and now I am safe for processing. I'm going to take my image and import it in. The simplistic way of measuring lengths using an image is to first you need to create a calibration stick, hold down the shift key, zoom out, zoom in, just make sure it's in the exact spot and then change this to 0.1 meter which is actually the 10 centimeter square that I drew onto the page. I then want to measure the distances so I'm going to create a tape measure. Now this tape measure here is actually red which is a little bit annoying because the laser that I used was also red. So I'm just going to change its color to a nice dark blue. Using the scroll wheel on the mouse again, I'm going to zoom in and position them as best as I can judge in between the bright bands. I'll then read off the length value here or I could read it off over here. If I wanted to, I could actually measure the distance between several bands and then average them based upon how many bands would be there to increase precision. Now we're going to look at some advanced use of Tracker. When I took the photo I deliberately did not have it horizontal and on a slight angle. So I'm going to show you how to correct for parallax or perspective errors. So I'm just going to right mouse click here and add a new filter which is called perspective and I'm going to go back to that and check its properties. Now on the piece of paper that the diffraction pattern is actually occurring on I made sure I drew the corners of a 10 centimeter rectangle. So I'm just going to position <coughs> using the zoom wheel make sure I get it all placed correctly. I'm going to fix up my perspective. Now that should be a perfect rectangle as I drew it on the piece of paper. If I now go to my filter, I do have a perfect rectangle just like I drew on the piece of paper. So any corrections for the angle um, of the mobile phone when taking the photo is now corrected. 
So now that the image is cre uh, corrected, I need to create a calibration stick, holding down the shift key, shift key, zoom in, make sure my positions are placed correctly, and change the distance to 0.1 of a meter, so it's 10 centimeters. I am then going to create a loan profile. Now the line profile here, as you can see on the right hand side, is actually measuring the intensity. However, because of the slight angle, it is actually not going through the diffraction pattern perfectly. So to fix that, I'm going to add in my axes. I'm going to position my axes and line it up with the diffraction pattern generated. To my profile, I will then get it to align not horizontally, but along the x-axis. And as you can see, it's now going through the pattern. I can actually do this, and you'll notice that that changes. So I can do some fine adjustments there. I'm just going to shift it up a little bit higher so it goes through more of the central ones. As you can see here, I'm actually getting the, the relative brightnesses. I can actually just look at the red spectrum, but as you can see, that overloads um, the image. So I'm just going to put it back on the brightness. I'm only looking at a very thin section. So if I actually, well, I'm just going to change the color so you can see this a little bit better. So I'm just going to change it to a nice dark blue. It's only looking at a very thin sliver. If I want to sort of average out the relative brightnesses, I'm going to change the spread to a value of about 5. As you can see now, it's looking at more of the patterns. And you'll see the change in the profile here. If I wish to look at the distances, I can do them a little bit more accurately rather than just using the measuring tool. If I then double click on this, I'll bring up the data tool. So I could actually just go, right, I want to look at this brightness here, which would correspond to a minima. So I could actually get the distance there, record that, and then compare it to the next distance minima. And that would actually be my separations. Likewise, I could actually go, right, this is about the middle of this um, peak brightness, record that distance, and then record this distance, and subtract the two, which is a little bit more accurate than just guessing where the central brightnesses are, because we can actually look at data points more precisely.